Hello and welcome back. In this video we're going to take a closer look at working with curves in Photoshop. Curves is one of the most powerful and yet most easily misunderstood tool for working on your images. So let's dive in and have a closer look at working with curves. The first question we should ask ourselves is why work with curves? There are other tools in Photoshop for adjusting brightness and contrast so why use curves instead of some of the other tools? Well, let's have a quick look to get started. Firstly, brightness and contrast. There's a, uh, an adjustment layer for working with brightness and contrast. And as you can see, you've got a fairly basic slider that allows you to brighten the image or darken the image and increase or decrease the contrast. But the problem here is we have very little control over the output and it's a fairly broad brush approach. So it's not really going to work for us in creating a little more sophisticated controls. Uh, so moving along we have the next tool available which is the levels tool which a lot of people go to by default and again it's slightly more sophisticated than brightness and contrast and you have some sliders for the black point, the white point and the middle tones but again still fairly basic and doesn't give you an awful lot of control. We do have a histogram here and we do have some tools for setting white and black points but again not sufficient control. So let's uh, forget that and let's go back and look at the options for using curves. And for some people when you first see the curves panel it looks a little bit daunting but let's try and make it a little more simple. Firstly we have our main uh, panel here and if you don't see that grid uh, of fine divisions here move your mouse onto the grid area hold down the alt or option key and click once it will cycle through using increments of 25% range of tones through to 10% so that we're, if we're using the, the finer grain uh, sampling of 10% we can work with tones much more carefully and get much more precise results. Behind you will see there is a histogram and when you initially open a curves adjustment layer you'll see a little symbol here that says if you hover over it it says generate a more accurate histogram. If you just click that it will generate a more accurate histogram that allows us to work with the tonality of the image in much more precise ways. Moving up to the top of the curves panel you'll see there's a preset called default that's what happens when you first set an, a, a curves adjustment layer and if we click on that you'll see that there are some presets here for different effects. Now we're not going to go into those just yet we'll come back and look at those a little bit later Next below here we have a panel that indicates that we're going to be working with all three of the color channels, uh, red, green and blue, but you can individually adjust the tonality of those individual channels. Now that can get you into quite a bit of trouble with color casts if you're not careful what you're doing there. So we're going to stick with working with the RGB uh, three channels combined. And over on the right there is an auto tones uh, button that, that has further options and we'll come back and revisit that a little bit later. On the left hand side we have a tool here that's called the hand tool. If you click on that tool to select it and move over onto your image and hover over a particular part of the image you will see that it's now indicating on this curves line the tonality of the part of the image that we're hovering over. So if I was to go up to the brightest part of the image you'll see that the, it's up on the top end of the line and if I was to go down to the very darkest parts of the image I'm working on the bottom parts of the tone. So we can use this to identify points on the on the curve line that we want to adjust. Below that we have a sampler tool for setting the black point, the mid point or the mid grey point and the white point. Now you can use those to set the overall tonality of the image but be careful using the midpoint because if you select anything that's not a perfect midtone grey you will end up introducing a colour cast onto the image and we'll show you a better way to set the overall tonality or brightness range of the image um, that works a little better and is a little simpler to use. Coming down to our curves graph itself it's fairly easy to read it once you understand what it does. Across the bottom here we have a range of tones from black to white and this is actually the input side which is what is in the image existing 
as we have it below and on this vertical scale we have how the tonality is going to be output and you'll see that with the line being 45 degrees for every level of input let's say 50% grey it is output at 50% grey and so that's just a really easy visual way to see how the tones are going to be adjusted. Now that we've seen basically how the uh, input and output works with curves what makes curves so much more sophisticated than using brightness and contrast or levels? Well quite simply if you were working with just levels and you moved your black point or your white point this is what you're doing and that's all the control you have. We can move the black point in until we start clipping tones right to black and we can do the same with the white point and so that's a fairly basic way to adjust an image but it's not as sophisticated as curves. What sets curves apart is that if we just pick a point let's say the mid-tone grey and we want to darken the image overall. If I just drag this midpoint down to this point and we can just see here 50% grey input is now output at 40%. So we overall we've darkened the image. But what makes this work a little differently is that you'll see that there is now a curve and as we flatten this curve starting from the black point moving through into the, the darker tones the, the shape of this curve is a bit flatter than the straight uh, transmission of one to one tonal range. So that what we've done is that we're actually darkening the dark tones more and more rapidly at the bottom end and then we level out and then as we move up into the brighter tones you'll see that this tone gets more steep and that actually increases contrast. If we reset that and just go back to how we were moving the tones before doing this sort of thing increases the angle of this line which increases contrast as well as of course moving the black and white points but as we move tones further and further in you'll see that we get more and more contrast in the image. So a steeper line represents more contrast, a flatter line indicates lower contrast and if I was to bring that white point down so that white in our image is now only output at about 75% white you'll see that overall the image has got a bit darker but it's also lost contrast. So let me just go up here click on default takes us back to where we started and we can start to look at things a little more carefully. Now one of the things I was indicating was that setting the black and white point of an image is very easy to do using curves. Rather than using these black and white sampler tools uh, we can do it in a more simple way and that means that if we were trying to sample a black point and we hadn't actually picked the, the correct black point we'd end up with a, a fairly poor adjustment. But if we just move our black point input slider by clicking on this little triangle at the bottom here and at the same time holding down the Alt or Option key on your keyboard as you move that point in you'll see a mask overlay over the image of white and as I move this point inwards by just dragging it across you'll see the tones starting to clip to black and so anything indicated here on the image overlay is now black. If I release that you'll see that all of these parts of the image have now been clipped to total black which is of course not what we want. In this image I've deliberately chosen an image that doesn't have a black or a white point because this is an image taken in fog in the Tarkine wilderness in Tasmania and it shouldn't really have a really black point or a white point for that matter otherwise we'd lose some of the subtlety. But let's say we just wanted to move our black point in so that we knew we had a definite black in our image and so I move in until I start to see clipping indicators showing me that some parts of the image are now black. So I release that point and then now if I go to my white point slider hold down Alt or Option again and drag that white point slider in until I start to see clipping. Again I have a black overlay this time and I'll start to see white coming through as I go in further. Obviously we don't want all that clip to white but just a little bit of clipping is fine and release that. We've now moved that curve inwards. We've created a steeper line. I've done nothing else but move the black and white points and if I turn my layer visibility on or off you will see that I've increased the contrast slightly, I've moved the black points further in, I've moved the white points further out so I've increased the contrast on the image. 
So far, what we've done using the black and white point sliders is really just the same as what you would do using levels. So let's now move it up a couple of steps and do something a little more tricky. Using our hand tool, which we identified a little earlier, we can move over the image and select particular parts of the image where we might want to make an adjustment. So if I clicked on that part of the image, it's now put a point on that curve line indicating that's the tonal value of that part of the image. And if I came over and chose another point here, and let's say another point down here, and another mid-range point here, you'll see now that I have a number of different points pinned to that curve. Now by clicking and adjusting that point, I'm really adjusting the tonal values around that particular colour. And I can drag, and you'll see as I drag that point upwards or lower, I'm starting to introduce another change of curve. Now as I increase the steepness of the curve, as we know, it increases contrast, and then as that curve flattens off, we reduce contrast. So our rate of change between this level and that level all of a sudden gets more contrasty and then flattens out and we have a new point. And you can put on this line up to 16 points on a curve and adjust each of these individually. Now it's not often that you would want to do this, but let's say we wanted to do something a little more tricky and we can start to do things in a little more creative way. And you'll end up with all sorts of problems if you go too far. So let's just reset that. And let's now have a little look at some of the default options here. Now there's a couple of really wacko ones which we're not going to uh, look at immediately. But let's say we just wanted to do a general increase of contrast. And I've reset that curve. And so we've now got a what's called an S curve, which is our typically increasing the contrast curve. And if I turn this on and off, you'll see that's fairly aggressive and it's probably a little bit too strong. But by using one of these presets and adjusting the opacity of the layer, remember we can adjust the opacity, we can, we can moderate those effects. But let's also have a look at some of these other options in the presets. There's a lighter preset, which just simply lightens the image. I think you could probably work that out yourself. You don't need a preset for that. But linear contrast is one that actually just offers a very subtle increase in contrast. And that's often a really handy one to just try. And then you could say, well, let's just tweak these a little bit more. And you can play with these until you get a satisfactory result. And bearing in mind that as we move this curve line around, you start to decrease the rate of change so that there's less contrast in these shadow turn uh, tones and then as we move up we increase the steepness and we increase the contrast so that we can really introduce some quite uh, dramatic changes and if we really wanted to go completely wacko we could do something like uh, cross processing which is totally off the planet or even make a color negative out of this image by doing something like that um, unlikely that you're ever going to use those so curves in this respect has quite a lot of power and again used carefully and decisively you can really start to work with the tonal values in the image to get the effect exactly the way you want it. Hopefully by now you've got some idea of the power of using curves rather than the other tools but let's take it up another step further and let's have a look at some of the further options that we have available to us. And let's go and have a look at the auto panel. Now, if we move our mouse over to the auto button, hold down the alt key and press this auto button, we get a new menu that pops up. And this allows us to do a few tricky things that are really quite clever. The first is we've got a number of choices here and we have an option here for, for rectifying a color cast and uh, this is I find this very useful in working with images where there's just a little bit of a hint of a color cast that we can't seem to quite get right and this is a way we can check it out now by clicking on each of these different options we will see different effects now particularly if we do the enhanced brightness and contrast you can see quite a big difference and if we click or unclick the snap neutral midtones we get a different effect again but for removing a color cast enhancing the monochromatic contrast uh, 
and snapping the neutral tones gives us a pretty good option but again have a look on your particular image and see which option works for you in this case we're going to say OK and if this is the option that you prefer to use most of the time come down and click on save as defaults click OK and next time you go in to work with the curves and click the auto button this is what's going to happen and if we look over here now in our curves panel instead of just one line we've now got three lines and these represent the three different channels and you'll see that firstly it's moved our white point in for all of the channels and the black point in and then done a little bit of different adjustment for each of the color channels so if we turn this off and on you'll see that there is a, a difference in the rendering of the colors in this image and in fact I think I uh, prefer it without this automatic correction but in a lot of instances it does work I think with the automatic uh, selection of neutral tones I think it's given it a slight magenta cast and I'd rather stick with a slightly cooler greeny tone that suits the mood of this image all right we've had a look at a few things here let's go and have a look at one of the other images that we've previously worked with this is an image we worked on in the first couple of our Photoshop basics uh, videos and here we can see how we can use the curves adjustment and that auto setting to give us an initial adjustment to the image so let's go ahead and create a new curves adjustment layer click on the curves icon and let's go in and click auto now I have previously saved those options enhance monochrome contrast snap neutral midtones and save that as a default so that's okay that's what I'm getting now have a look at what's happened here we've now got a dramatic shift here because we've clipped all of our brighter tones back to give us more contrast in the image and we've also done a slight color adjustment and it seems to have improved the tonality in this image no end and also given it a slightly better color correction so that's all well and good and from here we can go on and do other adjustments to our image but this is the time when I'm going to introduce a little bit of a problem with Photoshop and it's not just with Photoshop it's a it's a problem with all image editing software that uses the RGB color model and that is we get some unexpected results when we start changing the tonality in an image and it's not just using curves it's using any sort of adjustment let's just um, have a look at this image which is an image found on the web that's a royalty free image and we're just going to say let's have a look at doing a curves adjustment and see what effect it has on our on our model now I've previously set this up I've got a curves adjustment here and I wanted to just darken the whole image or in fact I just wanted to darken parts of my image I filled my mask with black so at the moment there is no visibility of this effect so let's have a look at what happens when I start to paint in some adjustments using my brush tool and white as my color as you'll see here it's not reset so let's reset those colors and using the X or this double ended arrow make white my foreground color opacity 100% and let's select the mask to paint on it and let's zoom in a little bit so that we can see clearly what's going to happen now as I paint on oh all of a sudden instead of just darkening the skin tone I've actually put a rather nasty blemish on her face we've increased the saturation and this is a problem with all image editing software when we darken parts of an image as well as making it darker we also increase the saturation and you'll see here anywhere on the image that I darken down the saturation increases and this is the opposite of how human vision works as we see things in darker or, or less intense lighting the saturation decreases because our eyes are less sensitive to color at lower light levels and so norm normally when we see something darker we see it as being less saturated and conversely when something is in brighter light it looks more highly saturated so let's create another adjustment layer and let's have a look at what happens when I lighten things and I'm just going to invert that mask firstly come back to my adjustment layer and let's do the opposite and let's lighten it and I'm now going to paint onto this image with white 
and you'll see now that not only have I lightened the skin I've also reduced the saturation and in fact if I keep painting in here her hair will go from a lovely auburn color to almost blonde and we lose the color and in the real world as we see things in more intense lighting we see them as more highly saturated this is an issue that we need to be aware of and this poor girl looks like she's been battered and bruised and how can we fix this well one option would be to rather than use normal blend mode why don't we use one of the other blending modes such as luminosity so that in theory all we're doing is we're blending the luminosity information and there should be no effect on the color well there's still an effect there it's not it's not totally removing the color like normal blend mode is but there's still a problem and the same with the the darkening adjustment we did let's go back and look at luminosity here well we've now got a nasty bruise instead of a blemish so we've still got a bit of a problem we'll come back and have a look at this issue later on uh, when we talk a bit further about color but for now just be aware that when we're looking at using curves on any adjustment particularly if we're working with uh, portraiture we have to be aware that there are some unintended consequences of adjusting tonality now there is another way to do this editing that has no effect and that is to use a different color model and that's a that's a discussion that we'll cover in another video so for now hopefully this has helped you understand a little more about working with curves it is a very powerful tool but there are a few downsides to adjusting luminosity or brightness in our images that we need to overcome we'll cover that in a further video thanks for watching uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you can be notified of upcoming videos i've got a lot more interesting material to upload very soon so i look forward to seeing you again soon